don't be a chicken. If you want to improve your positional skills, study Royal Lopez from white side. The best position for black is F7 square and a knight on G7 square. So this moment you should play for win. Any opponent. So here F5 is a big mistake. It's a big positional mistake. But white has this thing. Rook F1, knight F4 or this F4 I give. Bishop E3, Queen D2. Hello everyone. This is my game against Nihua. Fajira Open 2012. And I'm black. Let's get started. E4, C5, Knight of 3, T6, and B5, Knight C6. B5 is a Moscow opening. So here, white has three uh, three main options. One is bishop f1, another is bishop c4, another is bishop a4. And all this is part of preparation. Here, white had this interesting idea, knight into e5, d5, d6, bishop e6, takes, takes. And this position, Black's idea is to play like this. Black knight on f6 is somewhat misplaced because uh, this is controlled, this is controlled. So it is better to bring back, uh, better to play knight d7 and play f6. Uh, and c4, knight c5, and then jump knight into knight d3. And black a5 knight can come to d6 square. So this position, black is fine. So in the game, white played b3, and b3 is a very typical uh, Chigorin type of move because this structure can come from another opening. I'll just show you. It's from e4, e5 in Royal Lopez Chigorin variation. And white can uh, close all this. And here, black plays knight c4. Because white's next move, if black doesn't play knight c4, then white can play b3. So, so I have studied this position from black side because when I was a kid, I, I used to play Chigurin from black side. This used to be my reporter years ago. I knew the structure. So playing many openings can help you. You never know at what point of your life, at what stage of your life, you will be used this opening. So learn many openings. In Chigorin, I used to play in 2000, uh, 2004 to 2006, or let's say 2005 to 2007. But then I stopped playing Chigorin. Then I started playing Naija. But those knowledge stayed within you. So this is the game. And here I've got queen c7. White, white is going to attack this king side. So the best position for black is f7 square and a knight on g7 square. This is, and this is, these two are the, when white is attacking, these two are the best placement for knight, for defense. So now let's see. Knight d4, bishop x6, knight g7, knight g7. So here f5 is a big mistake. It's a big positional mistake. You will take this and let's say, let's say if you take with the uh, bishop, then this square will be weak. And like in future, this square will be also weak. Like this, this will come. This is bad. So f6 is the right move. You take f5. E5. If you GF5, there is this idea. If I play F4, if you play this, can I go G4? Now with this, this pawn will be in trouble. And with this knight is actually helping you to. And this knight is somewhat like out of the game, and queen is out of the game, 
suddenly your king will start to feel lonely. So here I played f6, h4. So this is the first step. Probably he was underestimating me. It is possible because my all my pieces are. Uh, and also another advice. Let's say your opponent is uh, where. Let's say you are two zero opponent. You you are two zero rating, and your opponent is sixteen hundred. Don't look at your opponent or don't judge your opponent while making your your move. Like uh, I am two hundred thirty points less than white, but moves matter that time. I mean, if you play good moves, it'll be obvi obviously superior. And also, don't underestimate and don't overestimate. Hey, who's your opponent in this game? Nihua two six eight one. So first oh. round for Jera. So he played. This is this is a clearly bad move. I mean, you should improve your position, then try to attack or try. See, in this position, white can also play on the queen side. But how? No, this position. Once a black plays all this knight b7, white's only idea is to attack on the king side. He doesn't have any queen because whatever he will do, I will close it. I will close the queen side. I have. Uh, I mean, he can exchange AB5 maximum, but it will be nothing special. I mean, his pieces are, he can't do any harm to me in the queen side. So his only way to do it in queen side, king side. So, I did. My all moves are very simple. And can you imagine when opponent can make such a bad move? He's a two six eight one, and he played. Uh, he I told many times, don't give double bishops. Never give double bishop if there is no proper adequate reason. And he simply gave it. Advice is don't be a chicken. Yeah, very important advice. The moment you start to play for draw, or the moment you are afraid, your opponent will take over. It's just like. Uh, they can sense it. This is like uh, something I have observed it. The moment you are like afraid, uh, like the thought arises within you. Okay, draw me, me khush ho jaunga. Like I'll be very happy if I make this game draw. And, uh, I will not take much risk. Somehow I don't know what happens that energy transforms to opponent. So this moment you should play for win. Any opponent. He gave this dash square bishop. So without dash square bishop, there will be zero percent chance of successful attack. K3, C4. So now I'm ready to open up the position because then I can exploit of uh, having double bishop advantage. So right now I cannot see it, but uh, why not open position? Now I can play on the both side. B C4, Queen C4, Rook G3. Knight g5 is very simple move. Knight e3, queen c5, knight f3, and I played uh, rook a c8. Very simple logical move. Knight h4. So don't be afraid of all this silly ghost. There will be nothing. Absolutely. Uh, and also here, white doesn't have all these things also because this pawn is falling. C4 pawn is there. So, so knight h4. Don't fall for this trick because knight f4 check is there. Take the rook c7. Very simple move. Rook f1. So I played uh, king f7. So queen c3 is my threat. So here, I mean, I'm just stopping this thing. He has to. He has to take care of his c3 pawn at least. Knight d1. Yes, b4. So king king h2 he played. I took bc3, rook c3, queen a5. The idea of queen a5 is very simple. You play this. Or even I can take rook c3 also. I mean, I don't have to play rook c8. I can take rook c3 and rook c8 pin. Yes. So he played f4. F4. 
and uh, there is another thing don't afraid of ghost the attack which does not exist but afraid of such things it took queen into four out of desperation all this attack are bullshit nothing will happen queen into g5 rook g8 e5 rook into c2 e6 takes now i'm exchange up and i'm winning so this is the last phase of the game win it systematically rook h8 but it's, it's very easy to win but it's important to as long as opponent doesn't didn't resign like no celebration rook c1 i like i like this move because there will be no counterplay in future okay. not that difficult move it's, it's important to exchange all the all the all the moves which can create all this future unnecessary counterplay okay how the game starts rook and f2 and this is king d7 yes and okay there is nothing much to see he played it doesn't Ah, here if you play this, this is the, I just intentionally gave it. Ah, yes, I can rook g2, just take this guy. And okay, here he's right. 